yes good morning everyone so this webinar is all about machine learning using uh, python and we are also discuss about machine learning and its real time application using python software in detail okay so before going to discuss about the session let me know what is what is machine learning and where we can apply what are all the different modules in the machine learning that we'll discuss in detail so in this session we are going to discuss about what is machine learning and what is supervised and unsupervised learning algorithm and what is prediction algorithm classification algorithm and application of machine learning and its real time case studies and also machine learning career opportunities and all we'll discuss in detail now so what is machine learning so machine learning is nothing but makes the things into more automated way so based on the human being instruction machine understand accordingly it react to that that's why we go for machine learning machine learning means makes the things into more automated way based on the human being instruction system understand accordingly it react to that that's why we go for machine learning google assistant is one of the best example for machine learning based on your instruction google assistant understand accordingly to react to that that is completely because of machine learning so when we go for machine learning there are three different modules involved in the machine learning that is supervised learning algorithm unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning there are three modules involved in the machine learning first one is supervised learning supervised means there is a target variable is there that means there is the output variable whenever we have input and the output variable in your analysis we go for supervised learning algorithm supervised learning is used whenever we have dependent and independent variable or input and output variable in your analysis we can go for supervised learning algorithm whereas when we go for unsupervised learning unsupervised means we don't have any target variable only input variable only we have it in our analysis that is only independent variable if we have only independent variable we go for unsupervised learning algorithm unsupervised means unsupervised means we have only independent variable or input variable only in our analysis we go for unsupervised learning reinforcement means based on the response stimulus so based on the response stimulus we go for reinforcement so google search is one of the example for reinforcement learning so these are all the different uh, algorithms supervised unsupervised and reinforcement learning supervised means there is a target variable there is a dependent and independent variable whenever we have a dependent and independent variable we go for supervised learning okay whenever we have a dependent and independent variable we go for supervised learning in that we have a different algorithms like regression classification decision tree random forest these are all the different algorithms come under supervised learning algorithm first when we go for regression regression is nothing but to find the causal effect relationship when we are changing one variable how much impact is there on the another variable is called regression regression means to find the causal effect relationship so when you are going to find the causal effect relationship we go for regression regression is mainly used to find the causal effect relationship because of changing ceo of the company is there any impact on the stock price that is regression because of covid 19 is there any impact on the economy 
that is called regression regression means to find the causal effect relationship when we are changing one variable how much impact is there on the another variable so that is explained in the regression next classification we can classify the records based on our target audience or target outcome we can classify the outcomes okay we can classify the result whether high risk customer or low risk customer we can classify the result so then we go for classification algorithm in the classification we have new base knn svm these are all classification technique then we have decision tree decision tree is nothing but for the particular problem we can arrive the n number of solution out of which which is the best solution for the problem we can identify with the help of decision tree okay so these are all the different algorithms come under supervised learning supervised means there is a target variable whenever we have dependent and independent variable we go for supervised learning algorithm supervised means there is a dependent and independent variable whereas when we go for unsupervised learning unsupervised means we don't have target variable that is there is no output variable in our analysis all the variables are input then we go for unsupervised learning unsupervised means we don't have any target variable so if all the variables are independent we go for unsupervised learning in that we have clustering association image compression probability dimension reduction these are all the different algorithms come under unsupervised learning first when we go for clustering so clustering is a grouping technique which is mainly used to group the homogeneous characteristics of responses clustering is a grouping technique which is mainly used to group the homogeneous characteristics that is similar characteristics of responses if you are going to group that is called clustering similar characteristics so clustering is mainly used for market segmentation okay for example you know the brand name called horlex right more than 40 years they are successfully running their business because of clustering they have different products if the same product running 40 years definitely it is very difficult to sustain so based on the target audience they are giving the different products like junior horlicks for children mothers horlicks for uh, pregnant ladies women horlicks for age old women so different target audience different product that is clustering clustering is a grouping technique which is mainly used to group the homogeneous characteristics homogeneous characteristics of responses we go for clustering clustering is a grouping technique which is mainly used to group the homogeneous characteristics of response we go for clustering then association rule association rule is nothing but we can find the frequently occurring item set so which combination more frequently occurring so that we can find with the help of association rule association rule is mainly helpful for developing the recommendation system okay for the if you are going to buy some product in flipkart or amazon so if you buy one product amazon recommends you what is the next product you want to buy so those type of recommendations are comes completely because of association rule association rule is mainly helps to find the frequently occurring item set so which combination of product most of the customer is buying that we can find out with the help of association rule 
the third module is reinforcement learning reinforcement means completely based on the response to Miller's method we go for reinforcement many gaming application is developed with the help of reinforcement only you know the chess game in the system if you move one coin in the chess system move automatically the another coin so that is because of reinforcement robots many gaming application is developed with the help of reinforcement learning so machine learning is a part of data science you know data science is nothing but it is a process where we can convert raw data into meaningful information for taking better decision in the competitive business so first we get the raw data then we need to process it then we need to clean it then we go for EDA EDA means exploratory data analysis based on that we can apply the machine learning through machine learning we can visualize the result finally we can make the decision so this is a process machine learning is one of the module in data science every industry they have their own process likewise if you go to data science also they have their process okay for example if you go to software industry also there is a process okay so if you are going to develop the software just like that we can't develop first we gather the requirement then we need to analyze the requirement then we need to plan it then we need to do the designing coding testing and UAT release the project to the client likewise there are set of activities involved so then only we can able to complete the project likewise when we go for data science also it is a process it consists of set of activities okay data science is a process which consists of set of activities involved okay so machine learning is one of the module in data science next when we go for machine learning majorly we are uh, having these two modules that is supervised and unsupervised whereas reinforcement also there which is a part of deep learning that is also we'll discuss so when we go for supervised learning these are all the different algorithms supervised learning means there is a dependent and independent variable whenever we have a dependent and independent we go for supervised learning in that we have continuous and categorical variable so when we go for supervised learning we have these are all the algorithms like regression decision tree random forest knn logistic regression decision in the tree svm and all whereas when we go for unsupervised learning unsupervised means we don't have any target variable so where all the variables are independent of each other so if all the variables are independent we go for unsupervised learning in that we have clustering association and uh, market basket analysis k-mean these are all unsupervised learning okay so so far we discussed the brief about machine learning what is machine learning what are all the modules in the machine learning and all we discussed what is machine learning machine learning is nothing but based on the human being instruction system understand accordingly to react to that okay that is by machine learning when we go for machine learning there are three modules involved supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforcement learning so all these we are going to implement through the software name called python why we are going for python what is the reason behind that why python is so popular nowadays why because python is one of the powerful programming language and python is easy to learn easy to use okay because number of inbuilt libraries are available in the python when we go for python 
number of inbuilt powerful libraries are available in the python so it is easy to learn easy to use also python is a open source anyone any time anywhere they can download the software freely they can download and when we go for python it is a versatility which means it is support multiple operating system it is support that and big data compatibility is there it is support large volume of data also it is support that's why we go for python so python is a open source anyone any time anywhere they can download the software freely it is easy to learn easy to use also okay it is python is official language of google and it is a number one programming language compared to other programming language python is a having overage in the market because of rich in libraries so top packages top libraries in python which we use frequently in uh, machine learning that is numpy numpy means numerical python which is mainly used to store the data in the form of array when we want to store the data in the form of array we go for numpy numpy can store the data in the form of array array means we can store the data in the rows and the column wise if you store we go for numpy so numpy store only small data when we want to load large volume of data we go for pandas pandas can handle the large volume of data so we can able to handle that's why we go for pandas package pandas is for large volume of data and even in the pandas package we can integrate the sql and uh, other uh, uh, servers we can able to integrate that through pandas next we have matplotlib matplotlib is specifically designed for data visualization for pictorial representation we go for matplotlib matplotlib is used for data visualization pictorial way we can perform all the diagrams and all we can able to do in the matplotlib then skyfy is a another package which is a scientific python where all the statistical analysis we can do it in the skyfy then ski learn and stats model is a package which is used for machine learning algorithm all the machine learning algorithm we can execute through the ski learn package through ski learn or ski zit learn through this package only will execute these are all top packages in python that is numpy pandas matplotlib skyfy and ski learn so where we can apply these machine learnings are applicable in which are all the places everywhere everywhere in this world you know one of the prestigious award in the world is oscar last year you know what happened the company name called clarembridge and cognizant they came forward and they predicted the oscar winner for best picture award they predicted with the help of imdb their ratings and reviews and rotten tomatoes their ratings and reviews they predicted revenant is a movie is going to won the oscar the same movie won the oscar so one month before itself they predicted and the same movie won the oscar so imagine that machine learning algorithms are very powerful in terms of accuracy and prediction okay machine learnings are very powerful in terms of accuracy and predictions so when we go for machine learning even by using machine learning google search engine is a completely works because of machine learning google search is a completely works because of machine learning only amazon 
if you buy one product in amazon amazon recommends you what is the next product you want to buy okay these type of recommendations are works completely because of machine learning only okay so way back amazon and all implemented machine learning in their business process way back they implemented so that's why still they are in the market leader position amazon youtube if you watch one video in youtube youtube recommends you what is the next video you want to watch so these type of recommendations also works completely because of machine learning okay facebook if you log in into your account whoever friends is there in your account those post only feeds into your account okay that is because of machine learning and if you add one friend in your account facebook suggest you who are all you can also add as a friend so those type of suggestions also comes because of machine learning okay complex decisions also nowadays we can able to take with the help of machine learning algorithm so we can do pattern recognition voice recognition and all we can able to achieve through machine learning how google assistant how machine learning is used in google assistant to automate their process let me give you one small video clip you can just understand how they used machine learning in their google assistant process let me show you one minute As I said earlier, our vision for our system is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done As I said earlier, our vision for our system is to help you get things done. It turns out a big part of getting things done is making a phone call. You may want to get an oil change schedule, maybe call a plumber in the middle of the week, or even schedule a haircut appointment. You know, we are working hard to help users through those moments. We want to connect users to businesses in a good way. Businesses actually rely a lot on this. but even in the us 60% of small businesses don't have an online booking system set up we think ai can help with this problem so let's go back to this example let's say you want to ask google to make you a haircut appointment on tuesday between 10 and noon what happens is the google assistant makes the call seamlessly in the background for you so what you're going to hear is the google assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you let's listen how happening out here hi i'm calling to book that for a client um i'm looking for something on may 3rd sure give me one second mm mm-hmm. mhm one second sure what time are you looking for around at 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1:15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? 
Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. That was a real call you just heard. The amazing thing is the assistant can actually understand the nuances of conversation. We've been working on this technology for many years. It's called Google Duplex. It brings together all our investments over the years in natural language understanding, deep learning, text-to-speech. By the way, when we are done, the assistant can give you a confirmation notification saying your appointment has been taken care of. Let me give you another example. Let's say you want to call a restaurant, but maybe it's a small restaurant which is not easily available to book online. The call actually goes a bit differently than expected. So take a listen. See how may you? Hi, um, I'd like to reserve a table for Wednesday the 7th. For seven people? Um, it's for four people. For people when? Um, Today, next Wednesday at 6 p.m. Oh, actually, we leave here for like after like five people. For few, four people, you can come. How long is the wait usually to uh, be seated? For when tomorrow or weekday or? For next Wednesday, uh, the seventh. Oh no, it's not too busy. You you, you can come for four people, okay? Oh, I got gotcha. you. Thanks. Yeah. Bye-bye. Again, that was a real call. We have many of these examples where the calls quite don't go as expected, but the assistant understands the context, the nuance. It knew to ask for wait times in this case and handle the interaction gracefully. Look, we are still developing this technology, and we actually want to work hard to get this right, get the user experience, and the expectation right for both businesses and users. But done correctly, it'll save time for people and generate a lot of value for businesses. We really want it to work in cases, say if you're a busy parent in the morning and your kid is sick and you want to call for a doctor's appointment. So we're going to work hard to get this right. There is a more straightforward case where we can roll this out sooner, where, for example, every single day we get a lot of queries into Google where people are wondering on the opening and closing hours of businesses. But it gets tricky during holidays, and businesses get a lot of calls. So we as Google can make just that one phone call and then update the information for millions of users, and it'll save a small business countless number of calls. So we're going to get moments like this right and make the experience better for users. This is going to be rolling out as an experiment in the coming weeks, and so stay tuned. You know, common theme across all this is we are working hard to give users back time. So hope you understand that how machine learning is used in Google Assistant, how they automated the process with the help of Google Assistant, with the help of machine learning, how small companies are getting be benefited in the opening and closing hours. Okay, there are so many companies are getting benefited that is completely because of machine learning, right? So when we go for machine learning, so I, as I already said, there is a supervised and unsupervised learnings are there. Supervised means there is a target variable whenever we have dependent and independent variable we go for supervised learning what is dependent variable dependent variable means output variable independent variable means input variable whenever we have a dependent and independent variable we go for supervised learning supervised means there is a target variable 
okay for example crop production or production of crop okay the production of crop is depends on the fertilizer usage soil fertility rainfall based on the rainfall soil fertility fertilizer usage only we can decide whether the crop produce more or less okay so whenever you have a dependent and the independent variable we go for supervised learning supervised learning algorithm is used whenever we have a dependent and independent variable okay then so what is dependent variable dependent variable means output variable whereas independent variable means input variable whenever we have independent variable we go for input variables okay so so this is the machine learning machine learning is a applicable in almost all the industries it is not restricted with a particular industry okay it is applicable in all the industries right retail sector telecom healthcare and all retail sector to do the market segmentation product segmentation okay market basket analysis when we go for retail sector when we go for retail sector to do the market basket analysis store segmentation product segmentations and all okay so uh, and we can have the telecom sector to do the subscriber analysis okay churn analysis and customer experience asset utilization so these are all in the in the telecom sector when we want to do the automation we go for machine learning and even in the healthcare clinical data analysis okay clinical data analysis and all so machine learning is applicable in almost all the industries okay retail sector telecom healthcare even in the banking sector to do the risk management mitigating the risk and sports sector to do the uh, player analytics and fan analytics selecting the right player right match right team is very important to to want the to want the champion and even education and learning sectors also very much machine learning is used to automate it and the government sector law law enforcement entertainment and manufacturing energy e-commerce every industries machine learning is widely used okay not only in the industry also business functions also nowadays business functions also nowadays requires machine learning machine learning is very much used in the business functions also nowadays all the enterprise applications also nowadays generating so much data right like erp crm okay all the enterprise applications okay all the enterprise applications crm risk management operation and uh, infrastructure supply chain hr all the enterprise applications also nowadays generating so much data so that is also we use machine learning okay not only business application nowadays uh, mobile app also nowadays generating so much data mobile app like uh, food app taxi app fitness app so all the mobile app also nowadays generating so much data we are generating now okay so all these are achieved through the machine learning only for example in the in the mobile app and all for example if you buy one if you order the food for your family every weekend you are ordering the dinner for your family okay in that case in that case what happened so on the particular weekend if you are not able to book the food due to some uh, commitments you are not booking you are not ordering the food okay in that case the app itself recommending you or notifying that based on your past uh, transaction past booking we are giving this discount so they are tempting to book the order in that time also so those type of recommendations and notifications are implemented through machine learning only okay even mobile apps are very much used 
and face recognition character recognition speech recognitions and all used machine learning you know uh, um, in china they controlled the coronavirus spread and death through through machine learning only okay they used face recognition algorithm vilo jones algorithm through that they detected the face through that they controlled the uh, controlled the coronavirus spread and death in china compared to other developed countries like russia or us uk canada compared to other countries china controlled the virus spread and depth that is completely because of that is completely because of machine learning they used face recognition technique they used face recognition through that only they controlled okay so machine learning is used everywhere even google also implemented machine learning let me give you one small video clip how they used how the google implemented machine learning in their process how they automated that let me show you one small video clip about machine learning talked a lot today about machine learning and ai we think there is an opportunity to accelerate computing by working on this with everyone else and so we are trying to do that in two ways first we are opening up core components of our machine learning systems last year we open sourced tensorflow so that developers can embed machine learning and deep neural nets with a single api in 2015 it was the most forked project on github and it is the number one machine learning project on that site last week we open sourced a natural language parser which is also built on top of tensorflow we are doing these things so that we can engage the external community and work on this together with everyone second for developers and companies out there we are also exposing our machine learning capabilities through our google cloud platform we already have a cloud machine learning platform underway and you get access to computer vision speech language and translation apis and we are working on bringing many more machine learning apis so that you can get access to the same great capabilities we have inside at google we believe this will be one of the biggest differentiators for the google cloud platform over time and by the way when you use google cloud platform you not only get access to the great software we use internally you get access to specialized hardware we build internally and talking about that for machine learning the scale at which we need to do computing is incredible and so we have started building specialized custom hardware we call these tensor processing units or tpus tpus deliver an order of magnitude higher performance per watt than all commercially available gpus and fpgas and when you use the google cloud platform you can take advantage of tpus as well tpus are what powered alphago deepmind's alphago in its game against laserdolf go is an ancient chinese board game there's a simple 19 by 19 grid but it is one of the most complex games humans have ever designed it has more possible board configurations many more possible board configurations than there are atoms in the universe beating go for computers was widely considered to be the grand challenge for ai and most people thought it wouldn't happen for another decade or so so we are really thrilled that alphago was able to achieve this milestone recently one thing worth calling out in the second game there was a move 37 by alphago it changed the course of the game and is now widely considered one of the most beautiful go moves ever seen in tournament play it was not just a intuitive move but a very creative move we normally don't associate computers with making creative choices and so to us this represents a significant achievement in ai 
By the way, Lay Sadal has won every single game since he played against AlphaGo. And he has even replayed some of the moves he learned from AlphaGo in that game. As the state of the art capabilities in machine learning and AI progress, we see them becoming very versatile, and we think it applies to a wide range of fields. I want to give you two examples. First, robotics. At Google, a bunch of 20 percenters decided to help robots, trained robots to pick up objects. You can see it behind me. This is not new. You usually do it by writing control system code. You program the robots uh, with rules. But this time, they decided to use deep learning techniques. So you create a continuous feedback cycle so that the robots can learn hand-eye coordination by themselves using deep learning. As you can see, they keep doing it, and they keep learning it over and over again. And over time, they get better and they even learn natural and useful behaviors. So for example, the robot is nudging the stapler away to pick up that yellow object. We didn't write that rule. The robot learned it automatically using deep learning. So it's an amazing example of what machine learning can do. Another example in healthcare, diabetic retinopathy is the fastest growing cause of blindness. It affects 4.2 million people in the US and many more worldwide. To detect it, you need to do a scan, a scan of the eye like you see behind me, and a highly trained doctor can detect it. If detected early, the treatment, treatments are effective. If detected late, it causes irreversible blindness. And it's very, very difficult to have highly trained doctors available in many parts of the world. So we set out to work with a small team of engineers and doctors, and again used deep learning, and started training on eye scans. And over time, our computer vision systems have gotten really good at detecting diabetic retinopathy early. This is still early, and there's a long road ahead and we'll work with the medical community to get it in the hands of as many people as possible. But you can see the promise again of using machine learning. When I hear about advancements like these, I'm reminded that we live in an extraordinary period for computing. Whether climate change, healthcare, or education, the most important struggles already have thousands of brilliant and dedicated people working to make progress on issues that affect everyone. Now consider what the best climate change researchers, doctors, or educators can do with the power of machine learning assisting them. As you have seen today, I'm incredibly excited about the progress that we are making with machine learning and AI. We believe that the real test is whether humans can achieve a lot more with the support of AI assisting them. Things previously thought to be impossible may in fact be possible. We look forward to building this future together with all of you. Thank you for joining us at Google I.O. Yes, hope you understand that how machine learning is used in various aspects of the business, how it helps to automate the process, how we can able to predict the process, predict the things through machine learning. Through machine learning, we can able to predict, we can able to automate that and all. And when it comes to career point of view, uh, what is the scope of machine learning in the market? So as per the NASCAM next to US, India is having the huge opportunities in terms of job wise also, project wise also, there are huge opportunities in Indian market, okay, especially for machine learning. So who can get into this profession? So the people who are 
uh, having a BTEC or BE, BTEC, MSc, MCA, MBA, PGDM or any of these degree BCom, MCom, any of these degree they can very much <coughs> enter into this profession entry level itself the pay wise very very high compared to other profession compared to finance or marketing insurance IT compared to other industry I the analytics industry pay wise very very high and top companies already implemented analyt machine learning in their business process like IT companies uh, KPOs bank analytics top companies already they implemented machine learning in their process and uh, not only in Indian company globally they implemented Walmart City uh, UBS Hyundai uh, not only in Indian customer globally they implemented okay so why you want to become machine learning so if you want to learn machine learning pay wise also very high opportunity wise also very very high in this profession okay so near future okay there is no doubt in that how uh, 15 years back we all uh, moved from uh, manual process to computerized process nowadays we are moving computerized process to machine learning process because we want to make automation when you want to make automating the process we need machine learning machine learning is very much important to automate the process okay that's why so this all about today's session so today in this session we learned about what is machine learning what are all the different modules in the machine learning and in this module each and every module we discussed a different algorithms and which algorithm is for what purpose we discussed in a very high level and also all these we are going to implement through python why we are going for python what is the reason behind that and top packages which we use frequently in machine learning also we discussed and some of the real-time examples applications uh, using machine learning where and all they applied and which are all the industries they used which are all the business function okay so all these things we discussed in this session also the career opportunity what is the scope of machine learning and all we discussed in this session okay so hope you acquired knowledge on machine learning and its application okay thank you okay thank you shall we close uh, shall we close uh, viral yes sir yeah shall we close the session